I'd like to start by acknowledging that we are meeting on the traditional lands of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pay my respect to Elders past, present and emerging. I also wish to acknowledge the Muawina people of Lutuwita, Tasmania, the people of the lands that I create and work on, and I recognise their culture, beliefs and relationship to the land and the sea. I'd like to also take uh, a moment to thank my collaborators for the four projects that I'm going to be talking about today and for the top photographers who've uh, blessed me with their beautiful images. So if we fail to take care of the ocean, nothing else matters. Living on the island of Luchuita, Tasmania, the most southern state of Australia, the ocean is never far away. The people of Tasmania swim in the waters of Bass Strait, the Tasman Sea and the Great Southern Ocean. The waters around this island are part of the Great Southern Reef and as we've heard today, they're known for supporting an astounding diversity of species. My name is Jane Bamford and I'm a citizen who collaborates with scientists and I'm a Tasmanian ceramics artist and designer. I've been working in clay for 27 years and over the past six years, I've become known for creating functional forms in species and habitat support with compassion for the non-human world. And this is what I've found to be true through this work, that as artists and designers, we can work alongside scientists and collaborate to support the marine environment. We can use our unique skills. We can harness science, creative design and philanthropy in order to support species and habitat. In 2017, I was approached to look at the possibility of creating ceramic artificial spawning habitat or ash for the charismatic spotted handfish. I'm going to talk a little bit about these habitats because this is where my journey began of creating for the non-human world. So when you hear me talk about ash, this is what I mean, artificial spawning habitats. Being a member of my coast care group and a snorkeler and a ceramist, it all seemed to align and I met Dr Tim Lynch at the CSIRO, a senior research scientist, and started working on prototypes. The spotted handfish exists in only eight sites of the Derwent River, Tasmania, and has been listed on the International Union of Conservation of Nature's Red List. Its battle for survival currently relies partially on the production and deployment of artificial spawning habitat, or ash. These replace the valuable spawning habitat provided by the stalked ascidian Psychosa pulchra, these ascidians are extraordinarily beautiful marine invertebrate and has been depleted by various factors, including the introduction of the North Pacific sea star. In September 2017, a spotted handfish spawned on ceramic ash in captivity. This event began my design collaboration with Dr Tim Lynch and the spotted, spotted handfish conservation team in Hobart, of which I'm just a small part. In 2018, I created 3,000 ceramic artificial spawning habitat, which were deployed in the Derwent River by divers. And in September of that year, the first wild spawning on ceramic ash was witnessed. In 2019, we redesigned and I created a further 2,500 artificial spawning habitat to be used in the Derwent River. In that year, Dr Lynch and I at CSIRO and I won the Design for Impact category at the Tasman Tasmanian Design Awards. It was there that I witnessed that our design was the only design for the non-human world. I decided that I would try and work and only design and make for the more than human world. My as a child, my relationship with the ocean deepened in a small coastal town of Triabunna, set on the edge of Spring Bay 
on the east coast of Tasmania, my eyes were opened to the biodiversity of that small bay. The waters of Spring Bay and Mercury Passage were abundant. In the bay ran blackback salmon, mullet close to the in inlet, skates, flounder, red and silver dory, gummy sharks at night time. We would fish for flatties and the sandy bottom, pick mussels from the mooring lines and catch trumpeter from in amongst the inky kelp. Later I learnt to dive and I collected abalone and crayfish for their, from their holes in the sea garden. I got to know these creatures and algae and I thought they would always be there. But I've watched over the years as this biodiversity has been severely diminished. I also witnessed firsthand the disappearance of the giant kelp forest we've talked about today, Macrocystis pyrifera, from Tasmania's east coast, and the arrival of the invasive wakame seaweed. My two children, your children, will never witness the incredible marine biodiversity that I saw 40 years ago. People may assume that this new normal is normal, this is known as shifting baselines. First coined by Daniel Pauly in 1995, it refers to how humans consistently and inaccurately misperceive changes in the natural system over time. Our ocean have incredible pressures, a lot that we've talked about today, from plastic pollution, ocean acidification, climate change induced warming and range extension of species, introduced species and unsustainable fishing practices. Diminished biodiversity is not normal. What I believe I have witnessed is a small part of what is happening around the globe. In 2020, I was investigating the possibility of improving designs of artificial burrows for little penguins these extraordinary little birds live in the ocean, but also cross the tide, land, tide line to molt and nest on land. It was that year that I was invited to join an exhibition at the Jam Factory, a leading craft and design centre here in Adelaide. I was approached the curator to ask if I could exhibit a little penguin nesting module. I'd been developing a collaborative partnership with South Australian penguin ecologist, Dr. Diane Columbelli Negro, Sarah Lena Reinholdt, and wildlife champion, Kate Wells, from the Kangaroo Island Wildlife Network. We plan to investigate possible solutions for little penguins experiencing heat stress in artificial burrows. I had observed that threatened species funding in Australia is limited, and when one species is funded, another misses out. This slide represents my thinking at this time. I decided to bypass this by offering my first module for sale only as a gift into Habitat. It sold two days prior to the exhibition opening off my Instagram. There are now five little penguin nesting modules in a vulnerable colony, all gifted in this manner. Uh, this was my first trial of how I could offer my work to be gifted and funded by philanthropy. One module is now being used by a nesting pair and the other has been used in the molting season. This work in South Australia and now in Tasmania has continued. In two, 2021, I de developed a similar project in Tasmania, inviting seven other artists to join me in designing and making for the non-human world. Partnering with the Derwent Estuary Penguin Advisory Group and other key scientists, the artists created 14 little penguin nesting modules, which were again exhibited and offered for sale only to gift into Habitat. All 14 modules were gifted in four days. This work in South Australia and now in Tasmania is currently in its science phase with an eye button in each module to collect data and data on temperature and humidity. 
This year, I will create a thousand ceramic razor fish shell forms, which will be used as a novel sub substrate for the collection of spat of Australia's native flat oyster, Austria angazi. A hundred razor fish shell forms are already in place and prototype di designs are completed. This is a small part of a larger project created and managed by marine biologist Paul Jennings and Alex Camino of the Kangaroo Island Landscape Board in South Australia. This time I've been supported by the Australia Council for the Arts and the University of Tasmania Centre for the Arts. I see artistic design and development of habitat support as innovative and important creative work. I believe artists working closely with scientists are uniquely placed to translate scientific knowledge into possible practical solutions. I have presented my work in gallery spaces to bring these designs and my collaborators' science to another broader audience. It also provides ordinary people with a unique opportunity to become philanthropists of art and science. So this is what I've seen. As citizens, we can partner with scientists to create and fund projects that support the marine environment. We can use our unique skills, harness science, creative design and philanthropy in order to support species and habitat. And we know that this is the critical decade. Because this is a time as never before that we know, we understand what we didn't know 50 years ago. This is the moment. Our decisions, our actions will shape everything that follows. Thank you.